uh, school committee meeting number 1645 at 6.04 p.m. on Thursday, March 9th. All right. Do you want to address anything with enrollment, Beth? Oh, or we're going right into Oh, here's, we need to, we need to add this to the agenda. We're oh. gonna need that at some point, sorry. That came in today. We're gonna have to add this somewhere. Okay, why don't we do this first? Okay. Um, I am requesting that we have a change to tonight's agenda that couldn't be previously anticipated. It came in today. It's a, mo a motion, I'm asking for a motion to amend today's agenda to appoint a new treasurer due to unforeseen circumstances. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to replace the treasurer due to unforeseen circumstances. Second. Okay, do we have any discussion? Uh, yeah, um, can, can, is it uh, proper uh, to discuss the unforeseen circumstances? Uh, no. Um, what I can say is that we just had a um, um, the need to we need to have a treasurer in order to make move money into um, the bank. So based on um, some performance and just logistics of our our former treasurer, um, we have to make a switch. And so we have um, we were very lucky to um, have a treasurer available who has um, extensive experience um, as a former business manager for over 30 years in different mm -hmm. districts all across the Commonwealth, uh, who now is retired um, but does treasurer work for different districts. So, um, Is the, the current the, the treasurer who is being replaced? Carl, this is just a motion to put this on the agenda. Oh, okay. Oh, we're not discussing it yet. Right. Okay, sorry. Uh, then I shouldn't, you shouldn't. Okay. You should That's okay. I was, I didn't know, I figured let it get okay. out. All right. Um, any further discussion? Therefore, seeing none, this is approval to um, change the agenda. Carl? No. To change the agenda. Yeah. To, to, to pass, agenda. okay. Oh, yes. oh, you're asking for, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So is that Nancy. Yes. yes. Sarah. Yes. Dennis. But. Um, Jim. Yes. yes. Carl. Oh, me. Um, uh, David. Yes. And let David. me go. Art. I'm, yes. I'm going up there. <laughs> David. Yes. David. I think David said yes. David said yes. Oh, okay, and Art was a yes. Okay, so I think we'll move that down to the business manager's report area um, when we get to that. Is this something else I have to address? Nope. Okay. All righty. So now we're back to enrollment, right? Enrollment. So in your packet is your enrollment report um, as of March First, we have 620 students. We can't hear. Mm -hmm. Louder. Okay, so in your packet under uh, 2B is, uh, 2A, excuse me, is the enrollment report. Um, as of March 1st, 2023, we have 620 students. Okay. Um, any questions for the superintendent? Uh, Art? It's hard hearing. We can't hear. What happened with the treasurer thing? We're not on that topic right now. We just added it to the agenda. Okay. All right. Any questions on the enrollment? Um, my question is, do we know what the situation is in terms of those two high school students? They are, they were choice students. Um, already to the district who one enrolled in um, Tech Academy. Um, they were a Beckett resident. One mm -hmm. was from Sandusfield who enrolled in Berkshire Waldorf. Uh -huh. And okay. we did have one transfer to Taconic. Okay, all right, thank you very much. 
Oh, and I should ask about the kindergartner. That's what I have. This is what I know. Oh, okay. So if I Great. don't know, I. All right. Thank you very much on enrollment. Um, miscellaneous correspondence? Uh, I don't believe there is any. Okay. Do we have a student representative report? I don't see a student rep. Mm -hmm. they, I think they were going to try, but I'm not sure we have one or a spotlight for this evening. Okay. All right. Which, without a spotlight, let's move public comment. Do we have any comment from the public? Well, seeing none, <clears throat> let's move to the business manager's report. Chris? I have nothing to report tonight. I'm here for the budget and the treasurer discussion, that's all. Okay, thank you very much. In which case, let's move to the um, approval of the new um, treasurer. I'll take a motion to that effect. Um, so moved. Okay, thank you, Nancy. We have uh, we have a second on that. <coughs> thank you, Carl. Any discussion on the change in treasurer due to the other treasurer leaving? for unforeseen circumstances. Uh, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. What is the name of the, of the person that we're, we're going to be voting on? So it's Cami Lamica. Is, is it that, that's, that's a woman? It is a woman. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is it, uh, is she, well, she can't be in the position until we vote. Is there somebody now, is there no treasurer at the, at there will not right now as we speak? We are making the switch tonight. That's what we're going to do. We are recommending appointment of a new treasurer. Okay. So, so, but that doesn't that, that doesn't directly answer my question. Do we not have as you have whatever a it is six fourteen a, 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 a treasurer for the district? You have one, but you're going to need another one at, by six fifteen. So, <laughs> is what I'm okay. saying. <laughs> Okay, so we have one and we are voting to replace the Correct, the so that it will be seamless. Okay. Okay. Any further questions or discussions? All right, seeing none, a yes vote would approve the appointment of, of this individual as our new treasurer. David? Are you on mute? Okay, Art? Abstain. No, the art. Art. <laughs> it looks like he's doesn't have his mic on. on. We can't hear you guys. He's on mute. It says mute on his screen. Now that is to mute. Is the owl not working? Somebody right. Is Owl on? I don't know if he can see it. <laughs> he just had sur eye surgery. Can you see this, Art? Now he's muted. I can't hear either. Okay, nobody can hear us. Are they even there? I can't hear anything. I think their audio is muted or something. I don't know. We're going to check. <coughs> We're checking can David you guys, right now. Can you hear us at all right now? Now we can. Okay. How about now? You just got to turn the screen. So Art? Elizabeth, can you hear us now? Barely. That's weird. Volume? We never have. It says a plus and a minus on the side of this thing. That's his output, not its input, not its output. We're troubleshooting here. Now we can hear. That's better. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, Art. <laughs> Art still on the vote. <laughs> yes. Okay. Carl. Yes. Kim. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Jim. Yes. Kyle. Yes. And Bonnie. Yes. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yeses and one abstain. All right. So you can transition Thank your treasure. Thank you. I think that's it under the business report. Right. Know, right. Okay, business with district member Towns. We, um, as we agreed at our last meeting, um, and Lu I contacted Lucy, and we Prashker, the chair of the planning board. School committee needed treasurer. I think it's a school. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, so we invited Lu Lucy asked to be able to give an update at this point. Um, and I will turn it over to Lucy. She will give a very short presentation, uh, updates, and then the members of the school committee will have the ability to ask her questions for a period of not longer than 15 minutes. Um, the objective is not debate, but to gain information that we may not have. Lucy, thank you for joining us. Go to it. Thanks, Bonnie. I, I can hear you. It's very hard to hear some of the other members of the board. So um, if you ask me a question and I don't respond, that's why. Um, but I, I do want to In that thank case, you for giving me. Can you hear me? Lucy, what I will do is repeat the question since Perfect. you can hear me. OK. Perfect. You can hear me OK? Yep. Perfect. OK, great. Well, I, I want to begin by just thanking the school committee for giving me an opportunity to um, address you and respond to your questions sort of in real time. I think that'll be the most efficient way of, of addressing your concerns and taking your concerns back to the, the full board. So uh, just quick update of where we are right now uh, with the support of DESE and our planning board council. Lucy we've been making very good progress on the draft <laughs> okay. uh, regional agreement. Um, with the exception of assessment methodologies, we have really gotten through the biggest issues uh, in the district agreement, which include governance, composition of the new school committee, transition, school closures, amendments to the regional agreement, and uh, having a provision that provides for periodic review of the agreement. We've got on the agenda for our board meeting coming up, the topics of other votes that may require a supermajority vote at the school committee level. Um, my guess is that we probably will require two more full board meetings before we're through all the open questions, save assessment methodologies, which of course are among the most important, if not the most important issues to work through. Our finance subcommittee is working really hard, meeting every two weeks and brainstorming lots of different possibilities on assessment methodologies, both on the operating side and the capital side. That work is ongoing. We've got a meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. if anyone wants to join and listen in. Uh, but that work has been moving forward well. It's very tough work. It's very complicated. There are lots of different possibilities, and we're exploring many of them. And it's taking a long time, but it's time well spent, well researched, and well spent. Um, on, on the community outreach side, we've got a facilitated community meeting coming up on March 18th. This is a meeting facilitated by outside facilitators. It's going to be held at the Great Barrington Senior Center, March 18th. It's a three-hour meeting. This is the second of two community convenings that we've had recently. I understand the first was quite well received. People were pleased with the format. 
and the opportunity to get into the weeds a little bit uh, on both the merger issues and uh, sort of aspirational issues for what a new district might look like. So if you have friends, family, acquaintances who want to find out more about uh, the work we're doing and who are interested in spending a sustained period of time talking about possibilities, please, um, please let them know about the March 18th meeting. And thank you, Beth, for sending that around to your community uh, so that they uh, have received a notice of it through your email system. We've got an educational quality subcommittee meeting coming up next week, which will be an important meeting to talk about, again, what the possibilities might be with a merged district and what the concerns might be with a merged district. So that's an important meeting that's coming up. Um, there's been a fair amount of talk about the estimate that is being used as a sort of a working estimate for building a new high school in Great Barrington. And Jake Everwine is working on a memo which should be released in the next couple of days that's going to explain in some detail the sources he used to come up with the estimate uh, that we've been using, recognizing, and I say this every time when we talk about the estimate of the cost for the new high school, recognizing that it is a very rough estimate. We can't pretend to have uh, a firm number or even a near firm number until we're much further along in the process, until we have architects involved, project managers involved, till we're closer in time to construction time. So this is just a number we're using to model uh, capital cost assessments, and we understand and recognize that it may not be the final number. However, it's not a number pulled out of the air. Uh, Jake Everwine used five different methodologies to come up with that estimate. So not only did he triangulate, he did it five times. I'm not sure what the, what the word is for five times angulate as opposed to triangulate, but he's got five different sources of how we came up with the number uh, that we've been using, as I said, just to model the capital assessment. I do want to say, uh, before we get to questions, that um, sometimes I feel that there's an overemphasis on what the estimate estimated cost will be for the new high school because when you go to town meetings and i know you've all had this experience when we go to our annual town meetings and you look at the school budget the capital cost assessment is dwarfed by the operating cost assessment it's a very very small percentage of the overall assessment for the towns and so in terms of controlling costs going forward which we're all interested in doing i encourage everyone myself included to keep our focus on operating costs and in particular in the context of these merger discussions on the projected savings on the operating cost side if we were to merge um, and that's what we're looking at very closely at the finance subcommittee. We're looking at total impact, not just how much more is it going to cost to build a high school, a new high school in Great Barrington, but what will the overall impact be on town assessments if we merge as compared to not merging? And so that's the analysis we're really digging into on the finance subcommittee side, because that, at the end of the day, is what people are really interested in when they go to town meeting. What's the overall bill 
And what are the projections, projections for costs going forward? And I did take a look at, at best summary of, of your FY24 budget and um, her conclusion with which I agree that you know, historical increases of 2% a year are not sustainable. That's not gonna happen going forward. We've been in an extraordinarily low uh, inflation period. Um, costs are increasing across the board, health benefits and other costs. Salaries are gonna have to go up. That's the largest part of your budget. And we have to be looking forward to um, what cost increases we expect with the merger and without the merger, because the one thing we know is things are not gonna stay the same whether we merge or not. So the only, I think the, the expression is the only constant is change. Um, that's true in this space, and we have to be prepared for change whether the two districts merge or not. So those are my sort of very high level introductory remarks and I'm happy to take questions um, and respond as best I can. And if I don't have good responses, uh, bring back better responses next time we meet. Okay, um, any members of the school committee? Kim? Um, could she explain the methodology behind the operating cost? how they figure that out when they don't know? All right, the question raised by Kim Alcantara is the question of operating costs. What is, with all of the things that are unknown, what is the methodology used to determine the operating costs? projected operating costs going forward? Yes. Yeah, so um, the first eight months or so of our existence back in 2020, we engaged Mars to look at our uh, two districts baseline where we are right now and what the projections will were, assuming we did nothing, assuming we didn't merge. It's not what I'm and they calculated those projections based on historical increases in operating budgets. They, it was a six year look back and they took that, those averages forward. Um, and you know, projections on enrollment and projections on state aid, which essentially was flat, in the projections and they did a very very detailed uh, analysis and report for both districts that showed projections going forward and we've continued that work and updated that work using more recent um, budget increases both on the capital and operating side to determine projections going forward so there's a lot of analysis that went into that and there are lots of reports out there that show the analysis and where those projections come from. And our finance subcommittee two years ago now, I would say, concluded that um, the current models of operation just aren't sustainable. And that was a conclusion that was reached almost two years ago and resulted in our looking harder at what the other possibilities might be. Kim? Well, my point was that they're doing projections based on what's current, but we're doing a totally different program moving forward with VOTEC and stuff like that. So that's how I'm not understanding how they're doing operating costs when they're basing on current models okay. that aren't even going to exist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually not correct. The, the projections on operating costs for a merged district do include operating costs associated with both the academic programming and the vocational programming. Those salaries are in there. Okay, so the, you're they're projecting it that way, but they still don't know how many 
vocational programs or which which pro which uh, chapter 74 they're planning on holding uh, it down to. I don't know to. exactly which ones, but in Jake's um, projections, he does um, assume, I believe, six to eight new vocational programs and staffing for those. Okay, I'll just add to what Kim said um, that the costs of vocational programs vary so widely that in doing the projections, do we have a schematic that shows, I don't know, something very intensive in the robotics field and then something like a cosmetology field? And when they figure out the operating cost projections, are they modeling it on specific folk tech programs? Yeah, so you know, this is a little bit the chicken and the egg situation. Um, right. But the CBTE advisory group, which is made up of uh, community members outside the planning board, are including among the criteria they're considering in choosing among different uh, Chapter 74 programs the cost of those programs. So it's it's one of the criteria that's one of the criteria that is being considered in making that choice. So yes, are they estimates at this point? Yes, I think they're reasonable estimates. Are they firmed up? They can't be firmed up, as you point out, until the vocational programs are selected. And we're working on that in parallel. Okay. Uh, other questions? Dennis? Yeah. Uh, could you make a comment or expand a little bit on what was that other group you just talked about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the CBTE advisory group. Um, that's a group of um, community members who were interested in. Uh, thinking about and analyzing various Chapter 74 programs, and they are working on putting together recommendations. Those recommendations have not yet been presented to the Educational Quality Subcommittee, but that's the plan. And I think we're about a month, a month and a half away from that. Does that answer your question? No. How, how did they come right. about in place since the, the towns themselves made the determination on taking the, the legal approach as defined in mass general law on how these groups were put together? Where did they come from? These were interested community members who were willing to that's spend not an a answer. lot of time thinking that's not, about that's not an answer. what chapter 74 programs might be appropriate for South County. This is not for discussion. This is just All right. I'm not. I'm not sure what the question is. This is not. Uh, these. Uh, these are member. These are representatives who have no authority under the statute or otherwise. They're donating, volunteering their time. They're a very um, impressive group, Dennis. Uh, and they're volunteering their time to give us the benefit of their expertise, knowledge, and experience in what South County needs in terms of a skilled workforce in the trades and otherwise. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions here? Um, David? Yeah. The. Um what you're saying before about uh, school closures and other administrative details in the current uh, progress in the proposed um, merger agreement, uh, could you give me an idea, a uh, more detailed idea about what uh, what that would look like, what the towns would have to do, um, what kind of say the towns would have, how many towns it takes, things like that? Yeah. So um, we just reached agreement on that a couple of meetings back. I guess it was our 
since our last meeting, Bonnie, or maybe the meeting before that back, and what we did was we took the provisions out of the Southern Berkshire Regional Agreement around school closures, and we added some additional checks and balances in terms of making sure feasibility studies were done before there was a decision to close any school and there was plenty of time for the community to weigh in before there was a decision to close the school. So it's, it's patterned the provisions and I can send you a copy of the language, but the provisions are patterned after the provisions in your current uh, regional school district agreement with some additional protections. So it doesn't require unanimity. Your uh, agreement doesn't require unanimity to close the school. It's four out of five towns. Um, in this proposal that is now part of the proposed regional agreement, uh, there would need to be a vote of six out of the eight towns. Um, and there would need to be a supermajority on the school committee. Um, with some very particular residency requirements in order to even get the vote before uh, the voters of the eight towns. Okay, David, thank you for that question. Do we have, have a, a follow-up on that? Yeah, too. Um, yeah, I, I did. Um, you, you said you get the vote before the town, so the, to the towns themselves have to vote on that, and that's... Right. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so it would require under this draft, uh, there would need to be a two thirds vote of the school committee with representatives resident in at least six separate towns voting to support the closure. Then it goes to the towns after it passes the school committee, then it goes to the towns and you would need six out of the eight towns voting in favor before any school could be closed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a question about the transportation study update. Where are, what's the status on that? Yeah, I think we're still waiting for Mr. Libri um, to uh, update his study with the new information that was supplied a month ago or a month and a half ago whenever that was so we're still pushing on that um that's going to go to the transportation subcommittee when that updated report gets generated well, and then it will be reported wait. out to the full board is that the operations subcommittee i'm sorry yeah you, you're right bonnie the operations okay. subcommittee oh, okay what did i say Finance? transport no you said transportation oh, subcommittee yeah, the, and I don't remember that one. Another subcommittee that right. I didn't know about. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we have time for, we have six minutes. Any additional questions? Do you have another one, Kim? So the operating budget does not have transportation costs in it as of yet because we don't have a final transportation report. Or am I wrong? Yes, no, we have transportation mm -hmm. costs okay. uh, factored into the mm -hmm. projected budget. Yes, we no, definitely without. do. But will it change because it'll, it'll, it'll change? It will change depending it on the report. It may or may not change. We don't know the answer to that right. yet. Well, as I said, depending and on the report. And we don't know the extent to which it would change. I mean, mm -hmm. as, as you may recall, um, what we learned from the transportation study um, was that not only would the cost, the transportation costs not significantly increase based on the models that he was using, and you can take issue with the models, but based on the analysis the expert did, uh, there'd be no uh, significant increase in costs unless the school committee wanted to reduce maximum travel time from its current maximum of an hour each way for students and get that down to 45 minutes. And what I was really heartened by in the transportation report that was issued was that the cost of moving that hour maximum down from 60 minutes to 45 minutes was not that significant. 
I can't remember the exact number, but it was really minor, something like sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year to get uh, that maximum time down to forty-five minutes. So, yeah, we're waiting for more information from Mr. Labre, and you know that number may change, but I don't think it's going to be a game changer one way or the other. But we shall see. Okay. Um, Obviously, any, there's not going to be any vote on this until that question is is uh, uh, nailed down. All right. Do we have any additional questions? Well, Lucy, I want to thank you very much. Glad we were able to work this out. And um, we'll see if you want to join us again at future meetings. I absolutely want to join again. So when I have more to report, I'll let you know, and I'll see if I can get on the agenda. Thank you okay. again for the opportunity. You are welcome. Try to enjoy your evening, what's <laughs> left of it. OK. Um, any of the members who are on the Regional School District Planning Board want to add anything? I haven't been to a meeting. Oh, since OK. I, I, mean, I, think, I think Lucy covered things pretty well. Yeah. Yes, I do. Carl, Kim, same thing. OK. So that's it. Can we go back? We have the student spotlight. Yes, yeah, the student, no, student, student representative. representative. Jessica's with us, yes. Jessica. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, so it hasn't been long, but um, for <laughs> updates, um, we have the um, seniors who are still deciding where we're going to have our senior trip. Um, we have fundraisers going on. I know that the prom location has been decided by the prom planning committee, committee which is going to be in Pittsfield um, at that golf um, place. And um, I think that's what that's it for now. Okay. Um, do you have any sense of how much they raised with the uh, Baba Louie fundraiser for the seniors? Um, we still have yet to decide. I believe one of us knows, but we haven't told, we haven't really talked about it yet. Um, we're planning to meet later tonight um, through a Zoom call, so we'll discuss about it then. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any questions for our student representative? Well, thank you for joining us and here, taking the time to also hear about the Regional School District Planning Board. <laughs> Have a good meeting. Okay. Um, chairman's report, that's me. Um, the, a couple of things that I would just want to say, please, for those people who have not as yet held a meeting of their standing committees. Ad hoc doesn't have to meet unless it's ad hoc um, needed. But to make sure that one, your committee meets, two, that minutes are taken, and three, that when you come back for the following meeting, that you have those minutes approved. Appro uh, edited and approved the minutes then have to go to Lynette. We are required to have um, all subcommittee meeting records on record. So uh, that's one issue. The other issue is not an issue, really. I spoke with Dorothy Presser. We have a longer discussion tomorrow. Um, and she's like the lead MASC representative. And we spoke about having her come out here and work with us. And I'd just like to take one or two minutes in terms of hearing what you f feel would benefit us the most um, in having you know, a lead MASC person work with us. Don't all volunteer at once what you'd like to see. Thank you, Carl. Uh, the purpose of this uh, a member of the, uh, is she a member of the board of MASC? 
she's like their lead representative. I don't know if they if the board works that way. Okay. The purpose of the, her or anybody from MASC mm -hmm. coming here, this would not be an appearance at a school committee meeting. This would be a training session. Right. So that um, presumably the purpose of this is to um, work with members of the school committee to um, to hone our skills or lack of or, or, or eliminate our lack of skills in, <laughs> Thank in, you. in, in governance and and uh, right. uh, and procedure at meetings yeah okay. that that you just Right on target of yeah, what I, no I, I need. think uh, even for those people here who think they've got it down, <laughs> I think it 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 is a, is a good thing to do. And even even if the only thing comes out that comes out of it is a recognition that we aren't as good as we all think we are, <laughs> that would be helpful. Thank you. I, I really do think, especially given how many new people we have, um, that it would really benefit us because we, what she's very helpful with is working on goal setting for school committees um, and getting, as you said, the people understanding their roles and responsibilities. And very often we fall into Mis inadvertent mistakes because of, you know, not really un totally understanding our role. And um, the idea is that we become a better functioning organization. Not that we don't function, but there is definitely room for us to improve. And um, it also, for those of you who are brand brand new, who have to do the charting the course credits, um, this would count for that. I, I don't know if it would fulfill the total thing, but um, after attending two workshops with her at the last MASC conference, I was really impressed how much she brought up that just rang absolutely true with us. So I will, report back to you. Um, I'm going to try to do it that we're able to possibly hold this um, either as a completely off hours type of gathering, you know, more social or training, or we hold it um, on one of the Thursday evenings. So I'm going to send out an, a note and if you give me your opinion on what you, after I speak with her, I'll give you the highlights and get what you'd like to do. Yes, Nancy. Could you, you might want to ask her um, what she might recommend for a largely new school committee. Um, you know, I think that, um, I, I think also too that um, for those of us who are new and went to the conference in November, there are still lots of things I don't get. Mm -hmm. Well, even for those of us who've done it for more than a few <laughs> years, there's a lot that you you know you don't so get. Some things you don't get. Yeah, things. you're not alone in that. Okay, um, that is for the sake of time and all. That's the major issue that I wanted to bring up. I will turn it over to Beth, who's got some really nice news. Oh, uh, I do. Um, April third. So, oh yes, that is that's that's my. Crowning, that's the cake on the, the icing on the cake, right? Um, no, so um, I am working uh, to, I, I knew I was gonna try really hard to have it um, for today, but I didn't make it. Um, so I am finishing compiling all the feedback from our community conversation on um, February 7th. Um, just, I just plan to put it in some form of a readable format so um, we can work together to plan our next steps, decide how best to follow up or support those who had questions or concerns, ideas, whatever. But I want to just put the information in front of this group, and then we can we can decide where to go from that. So, my goal is to try to get it done prior to 
um, to our trip next week, but I don't know if that's going to work. Um, so an, another fun thing that I get to do, um, all districts are required by um, the state to file um, a Student Opportunities Act progress report. Um, the state provides us with a, a template and um, all sorts of um, tools to use, and our reports are due on April 3rd. Um, and what DESE uses the data to um, kind of give us a statewide snapshot of um, what the district's priorities are across the state, um, what they are implementing, um, how their fiscal resources are being utilized, um, and then it's kind of a big data source for their planning and resource development. And um, they also use uh, this data for the different DESE departments that are working specifically with individual districts. So um, I haven't even looked at it yet, but I have a big file that says do this. So um, that's coming up. Um, in your school committee folders, I had Lynette put in there for you the year-long agenda document that we prepared. So when people are asking for things like when are we thinking we're going to do the guidance report or when are we thinking we tried to do this year-long idea and capture as many different topics and make sure that, um, you know, that's on there. So I thought it would be good for those people who joined us in November. Uh, you probably didn't see this. So uh, I, thought, I thought it would be a, a good thing for you to have. Uh, and what Bonnie's referring to is... Um, uh, an opportunity for advocacy that um, the Berkshire County Superintendent's Roundtable is taking on. We invited all of our um, legislators to um, meet with us via Zoom on uh, April 3rd. I believe that's a big day for me, I guess, um, at, at, <laughs> at 11 a.m. Uh, and we wanted to focus on areas that um, we felt were critically important topics that uh, as they're going through the legislative sessions that need to be addressed. So we have four major topics. Um, all, all of the Berkshire County superintendents plan to be present, uh, but we have four major topics that we're going to be speaking on. And um, each one of us was, or the, the group nominated people to lead the discussion. So. I have uh, been chosen to represent our county uh, talking about the rural aid and rural school funding. So um, Dr. Dillon will be talking about the um, out of district um, special education placement 14% increase that was thrust upon districts. Um, Mr. Curtis from Pittsfield will be talking about the um, 37 H and three quarters amendment uh, that snuck in under the wire in the last legislative session, which has to do with um, suspensions and, and student discipline. And um, Mr. Richard from Lee is talking about the lack of funding um, that is had, was not found in the budget for universal lunch is uh, moving forward, which um, there's some grave concerns about that. So um, I, I think it's a, a really great opportunity. I'm working with five other superintendents um, to put together our, our piece on that, but I will be happy to report back. But it's, it's a great opportunity and something we need to, to do more of. Um, are there, do you know what, of the different um, line items in the budget, do you know what, if there are any co-sponsors? Or like where our legislators have co-sponsored for bills and stuff like that? Um, I know which ones they submitted, um, and then they they were waiting for their committee assignments. So now they've gotten their committee assignments. I don't know if it's gone past that to you know what they like. They have a placeholder for rural aid. It's number five hundred. I know so, that, but I don't know who's going to be adding. You know, now they're actually putting the content in. And I, okay, because I was going to say, do you want my next my next question following that? When the time comes, do you want us to be sending? Please co-sponsor this. Oh, I'm sure there will be opportunities for yes. um, further advocacy based on these. Yeah, if, you, if you could provide that for us. Yes. Um, a list for us. Because I did, I asked, um, I, I contacted Emmy, whatever the... MASC. And um, didn't get really much of a response back. But I think that if we can ask our legislators to co-sponsor, um, that doesn't mean that they will, but if we can ask them to co-sponsor, that um, often is a way for them to know how much we, how many people want 
or are supporting a particular topic. Right. So. Um, Good. Yeah. Um, since this is on Zoom, do you think it's something that any of us should watch? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I believe it's a public meeting, so um, they they usually post the link. Um, so I think, um, you know, I do think this is an advocacy session from the superintendents to the legislators. I don't know. I, I'm assuming there could be public comment. I, I've seen the program, but I, you know, I'm assuming they also have a very short amount of time, and they do want to do something actually more in person next time. This is kind of the first attempt, but they Good. want to get that started. So I, I wouldn't say that you can't zoom in, um, but um, I don't know if they're if they're going to have time for public comment. There might be just question and no. answer. Uh, yeah, it was just to find the information. Sure. Anything else for us? Uh, not tonight. Any questions for the superintendent? Seeing none. Julie. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I apologize that my report is not in your packet, but I will have Lynette add it when she posts it. Um, so I was just going to talk to you a little bit tonight about what has been happening in the world of curriculum instruction and professional development. We recently, like a week ago, were granted a, another fund. We are being given $60,000 for a high quality um, instructional material implementation grant. And it is giving us a um, team of coaches that is working with a team from our district to do um, kind of an evaluation of where we are in the process with the implementation of our new math program, I Ready. And based on that, they then will help us formulate a plan of where we should move next in our implementation. And then the state will give us money. Well, they're gonna give us the 60,000. Um, and it's a quick turnaround. I have to spend all that money before the end of August. I'm sure you will have no trouble. <laughs> no, I don't think it's gonna be a stretch. Um, we are very lucky because it will allow us to provide um, training for our teachers during the summer um, to get some extra um, training for specifically the iReady math program. Um, the elementary school, um, I've mentioned before that we're looking for a new reading program and our goal is to have it selected and purchased the end of this year so that while we still have uh, at least one half a PD day left the teachers will be able to get their hands on the materials and unpack it and learn about it and then we'll be able to have professional development towards the end of the year during the summer so that they can really hit the ground running at the beginning of the school year um, responsive classroom we had our responsive classroom coach come in and she went into every single elementary classroom and modeled for them how to embed their content into their morning meetings so that it's not only meeting the social emotional standards but also the academic standards. Um, we have um, our coach from iReady Math that focuses on the middle school coming in later this month for two days to work with those three teachers. Uh, we have Mike Flynn coming in in May to do learning labs with our elementary teachers, which is a wonderful opportunity for job embedded professional development where they're doing it in the classroom right in the moment live. Um, and I guess that's about it. There's a lot more detail on all of the above in my report, so you can read more. A question for you. Um, I know when you did the math, you had a lot of faculty members involved in the selection of the program. Are you doing the same with the reading? Yes, we're using the same protocol that we used for math. So we started last spring mm -hmm. in terms of saying... Sorry. Um, <laughs> we started last spring in terms of deciding we were going to do it, and then 
teachers opted in to look at a variety of programs over the summer that I had sent out to them that met high quality based on ed reports. They did some digging, narrowed it down. Then we brought three programs to the entire staff, and they've been spending all of this year looking at those resources and presentations. So Thank a you. lot of work has been put into making the selection, hard choice Thank to make. You. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Yes, Carl. Uh, Julie, um, the school, I assume the school keeps records annually of which 11th and 12th graders take AP courses. And do you know for how long that's been maintained? Has it been maintained as long as, we'd, as we've offered AP I courses? Assume, yes. Um, do you happen to know the uh, total number of 11th and 12th graders last year who took it? No, but that, I can find that for Okay, you. but that, that information is available. It's yes. kept by the, in yeah, the superintendent's office. Yeah. Okay. So you want to know how many students Last year or this year? Or? Yeah, last, well, this year it wouldn't have happened. Oh, it, You're asking about the test or the course? I actually want to know both. Okay. And, and I have a, have a follow-up question. You have to pay to take the test, correct? Correct. Is there any, to your knowledge, since you've been here, is, is there any student who was unable to take the test for financial reasons? No, because if they can't afford it, we will take care of that cost. And, and that's a policy that we have, that if you can't pay the, what is it, $97 to take the test? Is it about that now? Yeah. Or so, yeah. yeah. That's been the policy, because we've brought this up a number of years. We make sure that that does not stand in the way. So that, so that students who are financially unable or will get financial aid from the school and so, from some fund that the school has. Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with the high school and how the classes are divided. AP, is there college prep and then standard? No. 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 Oh, no. it's no. no. Sorry for jumping no. in. No. Just uh, AP honors. Okay, uh, honors. Uh, there's, there's honors sections. Okay, yes, that's what I'm college, saying. So there's, prep. okay, so there's, there's no, no, no standard. Okay, could I see a breakdown of maybe the last couple of years in each of those categories, just to, cause like, like the on- The number of students that Yeah, don't. just kind of, you know, cause I mean, honors probably is pretty close to AP, I would assume if it's college prep, or my equivalent, I guess my day, mm -hmm. you know, cause I'm old. <laughs> it was called college prep. Um, I was just curious. You want, the huh? you want the information? I just would like the information, just, you know, to see where our students are going. Okay. Um, might anything take me a while else? to come I'm up with okay all that, but I, that. I will. I am okay with that. Okay. Just, and just, Mr. Carpenter may have it as well. Yes. So that's okay. He's busy. I, I just would like. It's just curious. Okay. Do we have anything else for Julie? Thank you very much, as always. Oh, I forgot one highlight. Go right. to it. I just. I don't know how I could have forgotten this, but the one thing that I just wanted to highlight that I put in my report was when um, I was putting this together, I wanted to just kind of analyze very broadly the kind of growth that we have seen with the new math program. I know I did a lot of presentations around that last year, mm -hmm. um, but what I saw from this year, from the fall to winter, um, so it's kindergarten through eighth grade, we have more than doubled the number of students that are on or above grade level from fall to winter. Wow. Yes. That's impressive. So just a, another data point that shows that this And, and you have that information for what grades? That, that is overall for K to 8. Wow. Between all our students in K to 8, we have more than doubled the number of kids that are on That's or above incredible. grade. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, our teachers are doing a wonderful job. Wow. So, sorry, I forgot that was like... No, that is like... I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I mean, given that, how long that's been an issue, that is absolutely wonderful. Okay, um, do, we don't have Sandy. We don't. She's under the weather this evening, so we're, we gave her the night off, we said.
Okay. All right. Now, fun and games. We're up to, um, we did this already, mm -hmm. but we now have um, the adoption, the formal adoptions, follow up on what we did previously, of the FY24 operating transportation and capital budgets. So I will ask um, for someone to make the motion as listed there. I move that we accept the budget as presented. No, you, you have, have, to, read have to read every you single. You have to read the whole thing. What do yep. we have to read? Everything. Savory says motion. Everything. Oh. Complete motion with budget figures. <laughs> right. Motion to. Now. Motion. No, I have to read this whole thing. <laughs> and nice and loud. All right. And you loud. Know. I have to say it loudly. You know. Okay. Motion to approve the FY24 operating transportation and capital budget as follows. FY24 budget. Operating expenditure, sixteen million one hundred eighty-nine five hundred sixty-eight dollars. Transportation expenditure budget, budget, two million three hundred sixty-five one hundred fifteen dollars. Capital expenditure budget, three hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred. Capital project bond repayment. $334,350. Total expenditure budget, $19,211,533. Continue. Total, oh, Fed, FY24 assessments, operating budget, 13 million. Well, operating assessment. Up, sorry. <laughs> Uh, FY24 assessments, operating assessment, $13,190,827. Transportation assessment, $1,428,979. Capital assessment, $322,500. Capital project assessment, $334,350. Total to be assessed. Fifteen million two hundred and seventy six thousand six hundred and fifty six dollars. Thank you very much. We have a second. I second it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the easy. You got the easy part. I, I, I want to know that uh, what uh, an omission, two omissions uh, oh. by uh, Jim. Uh, he corrected it uh, after the first two, but with uh, operating. Fiscal year 24 budget, he recited the amount of operating expenditure budget this way 16,189,568. And on transportation expenditure budget, he did the same thing 2,365,115. From there on, he said thousand, but he did not say thousand on those two. And I think it's important that uh, that, that be. Clear Thank because you. you suppose it, you. The, the motion has to be read, read in I'm its glad entirety. You, you did, so I wasn't going to be the pain in the neck on that. <laughs> All right, this is the budget we approved previously. Are there any comments, discussion? Okay. Does, some, does someone happen to know what what the plus or minus on the assessment is? What's the minus on the assessment? No, the, it, but it's from last time. Like, what do you mean? The yeah, is, uh, is it up? Is it down? The assessment's up, much? but it's down a lot. It's less than. I mean, it, it was. The assessments were. I was overall, just looking for the delta. Yeah, I know, it, but it, it, is Dennis's question. Uh, the total assessment, the percentage increase is 3.45. I was, I was just looking for what the delta difference is on, on the assessments. I'm going to tell you. This year, last year. Thank you. Thank you. 3.45%. 3.45%. Okay. Any and further? The budget was 3.99, correct? Correct. Wow, good, Carl. Good. Did his homework. I told him there was a quiz last night. Um, yeah, no, I wrote, I, you wrote on your hand? <laughs> oh, cheating. <laughs> Any further questions? All right, seeing none, um, I'll start with Carl. Yes. Kim. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Dennis. Yes. 
Jim. Yes. Kyle. Yes. Um, Art. Yes. David. Abstain. And Bonnie, yes. That's nine yeses, one abstention. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, would you like to present the request, sir? Sure. All right, so, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, I would like to request. You're going to have to yeah. bring yourself up here. You might as well. I'm not loud enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes, first, I would just, yeah, we're never worried about that. The only man, really, who never needs a mic. I could yell louder. I'm all the way to Well, I'm just figuring you're going to have to be up here anyway. You might right. as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and for your entertainment <laughs> approval, we have Jesse. Here he comes. Here he is. Carpenter. Carpenter. Thank you for having me. So uh, I want to formally ask that we can hold the graduation ceremony on uh, Saturday, June 3rd at uh, 10 a.m., uh, hopefully at uh, Tanglewood. Um, I only say hopefully because, uh, you know, I, I made contact with them and they gave us, um, asked for our preferred date for that in the practice, um, which happens on Friday the day before. Um, and then we would hold the awards night on Wednesday, uh, May 31st. Um, so and that's not in the... Yeah, you don't sorry, need that. Did I cut you off? No, you're good. You're good. Uh, the awards would we would do it the way we did we, it last we year. We did that here. The plan for this year would be to go outside, um, and then if we have inclement weather, to move inside to the tack pack. Uh, in the last couple of years, because of COVID, we <coughs> moved the date, um, and some of the feedback I got from the survey we sent to parents in the past was moving the date of the awards night. Um, you know, a, a lot of people had issues getting the family members they wanted there on another night and so uh this year we decided that um you know we'd have it at, at outside if we can and if not we'd move it inside um and have it wednesday oh and then it'd just be like friday night and saturday is that what it is uh well f so friday is just our practice yeah, our oh, so yeah. i have to request that from tanglewood we go right. up there with the with the students just to uh give them a chance to sort of have the lay of the land so mm -hmm. that uh, it looks professional on the day of the big event so. Yeah, and then they do the walk through the school. Yeah. Carl, you had a motion. Uh, yeah, I made the motion to uh, to, to approve the, uh, uh, Mr. Carpenter's request. I second. Okay, give him a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. David. David. Yes. No, no. Okay. We, we got you, Art. We got you, Art. It's Dave. Art, you're good. I'll come back to him. Carl. Oh, oh, oh. What? He unmuted. All right, David? Yes. Okay. Carl? We can't hear again. You can hear? No, because Jesse was probably way over there. And... What can't you hear? The vote or... You can't hear with the question. I think they're you guys. We can now again, but we couldn't before. Ah, okay. So we're voting on the approval of Tanglewood on the third for graduation. That was what your yes was. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Carl. Yes. Kim. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Jim. Yes. Kyle. Yes. Bonnie, yes. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Okay, so should I move out of the way? To be, um, I can move. For the program of studies. Sure. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you move. That's fine. Oh, this has a video for student spotlight after. Oh, okay, great. All right, Mr. Carpenter is here for the um, approval of the Mount Everett Program of Studies. I have to tell you, I'm editorializing, quite impressed. Thank you, thank you. Really quite impressed. But I, I do that. have to, as I had promised, 
um, Art Pataki, uh, who originally didn't think he'd even be here, had asked if we could postpone this vote. Um, and speaking with both, well, speaking with Beth, who spoke with Jesse, it really um, would be a problem. Our next school committee meeting is so far um, into April that it would really be quite upsetting for faculty and students to not be able to start distributing anything until the end of April. I mean, that's part of the reason that one, Lynette sent out everything earlier than the 48 hours and we have uh, the change sheet so you were able to just look at where the changes were. So um, I would entertain a motion to approve the 2023-2024 Mount Effort Program of Studies. So moved. All right, second. and Nancy second, that was Carl, Nancy. And um, let me turn it over to you first, Jesse. Okay, thank you. Um, for those of you who are Wiley veterans um, and were here last year, um, we had made a lot of changes last year um, to the program of studies, uh, updating electives, um, and basically, uh, especially in English, looking at, um, we had surveyed the students about some of the interests they had in electives and moving towards more of them. Um, this year, uh, we've kept all those electives in um, and we've looked at some of our other electives and um, made some tweaks uh, to the descriptions, which you can see in the, in the uh, change log. Um, we also uh, did some reconfiguring of sort of our plan for um, the early college English uh, classes for seniors. Um, you know, this year um, we have kids, some kids took it in the fall, some took it in the spring. Um, after a lot of consideration, we've decided to do it next year where uh, students, um, for the most part, will take it in the uh, fall and then uh, take an elective uh, English early college class in the spring. Um, and the idea would be to have um, our faculty member uh, here uh, teach uh, that early college class and um, uh, the writing the humanities, we've kind of changed the description to account for some of the things that we think are really important, you know, that we did in the past with senior English. Um, you know, we tried it a little differently this year in the way we attack uh, the college essay and resumes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and so we're gonna look at uh, the fall semester in that experience to be sort of the uh, preparation time, the onboarding for everybody um, and, you know, cover a lot of that stuff. And then really the second half of the semester um, get into the uh, nitty gritty of the reading and writing and then carry that over in the elective in the spring. Um, so that's that's just one of the, the changes um, that we had. Um, obviously, we're in the process of getting some more faculty um, from Mount Everett certified as early college, um, um, getting their initial certification to teach early college. If that happens, we will have some of the electives in the program of studies that uh, will become early college classes, and there'll be some classes that um, are not even listed in the program of studies that could be early college classes. Um, we're still playing around with a lot of ideas about um, you know, what uh, individuals here from Mount Everett, um, our faculty may offer. Um, and so we're excited about that. But again, um, as I've said the last couple of years, some of this is um, you know, uh, build it on the go um, because we still have some people going through the training. We're hoping to have that done um, in the early parts of the summer so that there's planning for what we're gonna to try to roll out in the fall and spring. Um, and again, please understand there's a rough draft in the sense that um, we have a couple things we need to fix. Um, uh, the reason that, uh, you know, when, when Beth talked to me about the idea of postponing this, um, I asked that it not happen was that once we kind of get your approval, we still do some fine tuning on the program of studies. Um, and then we really, it takes a little bit of time to plan on getting it out to the kids. Um, you know, we have our guidance counselors push into to classes, and so it takes a little bit of time to plan that. And um, when it happens in the middle of April, it, it sets us back a couple weeks in, in getting that process going. Uh, because until we get that process going, we can't really build the schedule that we need to have. Um, and of course, um, you know, we have to have that out by the end of the school year to our staff. Um, and so that's why it's 
uh, really important to get this going now. Um, just one thing um, that I will mention about the rough draft status. I mean, for the most part, the classes are final drafts. It's really um, uh, the last part about early college that we have to tweak a little bit based on the fact that now that we're wall to wall, um, some of the language about opting out and things like that is not necessarily true um, because we do have some classes that we're, we have all students take now. Um, and so we just want to okay. clean that up okay. a little bit. Um, and we didn't really have the chance to change it right now prior to getting it out um, because uh, you know we want to be really clear about what that looks like. And that's really just talking about like the last 10 pages, I think, is that where that early like college four. information. What? It's not that. It's only four pages. Oh, four pages. I have to look at my new PDF. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we condense it a little bit. Questions so. for... Dr. Carpenter here. So you're saying the, I see the ones that are the college credits? So the ones that are listed as college credits, we know we're offering. So, um, but students don't have to take those particular classes? Um, they kind of get a choice of, of them. So for instance, next year, uh, a senior would have the option of taking the AP, I'd have to look it up if it's the language and literature course. Um, but they, they have the option of taking that or write in the humanities in the fall semester. And then in the spring semester, they would have the option of taking uh, one of the electives taught by our faculty member, uh, and then we're gonna have another elective uh, from uh, uh, Simon's Rock professor who's currently teaching the writing in the humanities this year for us. Um, he's gonna offer an elective in the, in the um, spring for that. What is the difference between elective and then a standard course? So the writing in the humanities is more of a, you know, more of a, a class that really focuses on the reading and writing as opposed to the elective, which has those aspects. But like Murder Most Foul was a example of one of the electives we ran this year, which was on, um, you know, the mystery. And um, that is an English credit towards high school graduation? Uh, and yes, college. And, and college credit as well, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, three college credits. Yep. The other one is, um, uh, we changed the name to for this year coming up, Murder Most Foul, the fiction of detection. Um, <laughs> we tweak some of our, our <laughs> courses a little bit and just based on how they, they went. Um, and then uh, the other one is, um, um, our, we used to offer a graphic novel class that um, this year on the fly, uh, Kevin Wogan was turned into a college bearing class. Um, I'm so happy about that because kids yeah. really. No, it's been it's been great. I mean, the, the you know we we I can't say enough about uh, the experience that the kids have had with Kevin this year and being the first of our faculty to offer you know early college classes. It's it's just been uh, from my standpoint of working on this for the last four years and, and for everybody else who's been involved in it. Just watching that process of of having one of our faculty members do it and just the dialogue back and forth between Simon's Rock and, and our staff, um, you know, it, it's been really nice. And, and I think it's gonna, you know, the more people we get certified, I think some of that dialogue between the two institutions, I think it would be tremendous. Um, I have a question in terms of, there are a couple of courses where it's listed as virtual, but if it's not Simon's Rock, mm -hmm. why, does it still have to remain a virtual course, an only online course? Uh, uh, I think, I mean, I, are, are you referencing classes that fall under technology? Uh, or, no, I thought it was. I mean, I think we have it written in there that kids still have, our, our students still have the opportunity to access uh, courses from uh, virtual high school, oh, Simon's okay. Rock, right. um, and, and BCC. Um, you know the the virtual high school. You know you got we the talk earlier was about the AP test. You know we do have some students who are part of a state program who don't have to pay for the AP test because the state pays for it for them. The mm -hmm. SAFO program um, in like AP Biology, AP Physics, um, and we have a handful of kids that that want to take those upper level science classes, uh, but those are completely online because it runs through virtual high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, that answers the question there. Yeah. All right. Other questions, yeah. Carl. Um, Jesse, uh, I, I apologize for no, not knowing the answer to this, and I sh probably should. Is the passing grade, which is listed as sixty, um, is that 
mandated by the state or is that up to the individual school? So that is up to the individual school to set it. Uh, we recently changed it to 60. From where? Uh, we were at 70. And there was a whole host of reasons why we did it. Some of it were some of the things we saw coming out of the pandemic, uh, some of the things that we discussed around equity. I think one of the biggest things was we were finding out that it, it put us at a little disadvantage um, when uh, colleges compared our students to other students because we weren't on the same structure that most schools are on. So, so presumably, uh, well, who, who makes that decision? Who makes what decision? The, the decision of what constitutes a passing grade. How is that, de how is that decision reducing it from 70 to 60 made? I uh, came to the school committee and proposed that. Oh. And the school committee voted on it. Um, so could you, could you, for re similar reasons or different reasons, come back to the school committee and ask that the passing grade be reduced to 50%? Is, is uh, there a floor? I think. I don't think you can 60. go. Yeah, no. I think I think 60. sixty is the floor. Then that's a floor yeah. set by by Desi, or somebody. Somebody. It, it Someone just, in the Commonwealth. Yeah, it's it just the standard. Somebody with bottom standard. line for colleges, high schools throughout the country. You know, anything below is you can't go below that and pass. So, so I have a similar question, but I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. The proficiency score for MCAS, which you must reach in order to graduate, that's, that proficiency score is set by Desi, yes. Desi yeah. not by the school. Right. Yes. And we used to put the exact numbers in the program of studies. I think now it uh, reads as must reach a proficiency score as determined by Desi. Right, right. The reason we did that is they're continually over the last couple of years changing the numbers. And so I did not want it to be confusing to parents who year to year um, it's changed. Um, this will be going into next year, the third time it's changed in like six years. So will seniors next year, next year's seniors, know what the proficiency score they must achieve in order to uh sophomores yeah sophomores yeah. Yeah. this year Trans sophomores will know yes yeah. oh right because you don't tell you right. okay yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. and then there's the there's the next step of if you don't get a proficiency score you need a certain score to fit into what they call the epp part of it which is you have to take mass core which we have uh, but you have to take four years of math and four years of English and in order to get your diploma if you get a, a qualifying score. Okay. And, and one final question, but this is, a, this is more a comment than a question. Um, Julie uh, commented that uh, the uh, number of students performing at or above grade level had doubled. Is that, is that a high school statistic or is it? No, that's the element. We're, we're looking at K, 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 K through And only, K I was only referencing math. Oh, only Just math. math. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my comment anyway. Because the chair, the, the, the chair. I can make it because. The, well, the chairwoman said that that's phenomenal, but it's only phenomenal in context. If, if the amount of students who were two years ago were performing was was five percent of the student body, and it doubled to ten percent of the student body. That wouldn't be so impressive. It was you thirty agree? something. No, no. Did Julie say what it was? It, what, it what? was thirty something. So the fact that the numbers have gone up wasn't five percent or ten percent or whatever. No, I, but I didn't think Julie mentioned. That. I didn't. Give, you're right. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful observation. Okay. No, I just, I was saying okay. without a context, like that would have been a context. I guess it was a context for me. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, Kim. Uh, just one more quick question. So the only classes right now that you can receive college credits for is in the English field. No. Because I we haven't have, seen yeah, we didn't, them <laughs> yeah, anywhere else. We didn't list them. We're going to have a separate... Um, 
uh, standalone uh, packet that goes to students once we have a little better idea of what we have. And so what I didn't want to do is put them in the program of studies, which uh, we, know we, we post on our website and people have the opportunity to look at any time they want, as these are potential college-bearing classes. But we're going to identify some of the electives that we have that we know because of who's getting certified and started the certification process. I'll give you an example, John Hamill. He offers some high school oh. electives that probably will move towards college credit. He also has a plan for a couple other classes that he'd like to give his college credit. Um, but again, this is one of those tricky processes for where we are now because what we end up doing is we come up with a plan, we write up a proposal, we send it to Simon's Rock, they okay it. We, then they ask for the syllabus, they okay the syllabus, and then we're good to go. Sometimes that takes like almost a week into the semester because we're still in the infancy of this wall-to-wall -wall program that we're doing. I would assume three to five years uh, from now, that process will be a lot easier um, because we'll now know the sort of the schedule for getting additional people certified and things like that. Um, but there will be, you know, they, they've thrown out some classes that they'd like to offer um, in um, the arts. They threw out um, a couple science ones they'd like to offer. They have a whole bunch of offerings that could happen in the summer. Again, you know, we don't put those in the program of study because, you know, we, it's only if kids are available. Like if kids are working or things like that, some of those summer classes are not really feasible. However, for other kids, they jump right on because they're like, oh, this is great. I'll take two classes, pick up six college credits. So, you know, we share all that information with the kids. We just don't include it totally in the program of studies. Okay. Do we have anything else? I have, I found one of the so ones that I looked at with um, a, a P A B calculus. Yeah. And it's, and now I know that would Ken be part, yeah. worked on it, but it says here online only. So the description in that matches the AP that comes out of the SAFO program in the state. So it's part of virtual high school. So we've left that one in there because um, we're not sure if we're gonna run AP calculus as a standalone class in person, and it, it'll depend on numbers. We have a uh, one of our math teachers here got um, went through the training for AP, and so we have the opportunity to run AP calculus. And again, it just matters on the numbers of kids. Then how does that relate to the way the, the course that Ken Knox developed, working specifically, you know, with us? That was cal AP calculus. I mean. Possibly if, you know, when Simon's Rock figures out like who they can offer to us, it's possible oh, Ken could come okay. and teach that. It's just a matter of like what availability is. Um, okay. And, okay. you know, Ken has done a, a couple classes around uh, mathematical logic, which has that's been popular with the kids. I could use so, that. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we, we kind of have done that in place of some of uh, Okay, yeah. before I go back to Kim, is there anyone else? David Hayes. Wait, Art? Um, I have multiple questions, I guess. Um, the first one, you said uh, you're updating the last four pages with Simon's Rock. Do we get to, when the program of studies is completely, completely done, does it come back to the school committee? Not usually. I mean, the changes, the changes we're talking about are not, um, dramatic in the sense of like, you know, with the classes that we'd be taking out class or adding new classes. It's, it's more like in the language that we have uh, under some of the programming, like early college, that uh, sometimes we end up changing um, based on, you know, a whole bunch of different things that can happen before, you know, that actually goes to students. So in this case, I think, I think in this case, the biggest one we're worried about is we, we used to have something in there allowing students to opt out completely, but that was really when we were not running a wall-to-wall -wall college program. We were running it sort of as like, we started sort of in the academy setting, where we'll offer this and if kids wanna take it, they can. Um, but under the wall-to-wall -wall philosophy, you know, we're trying to get kids to, to get at least, you know, a couple classes, six, 12 credits in their experience here, so. Um, I, there's just a, a little bit of the language needs to change. Beth? Yeah, I was just saying some of that initial language that's in there at the end was 
really what was written into <coughs> the grant as we were proposing it. And now that it's actually in application, that language isn't what we're doing. You know, so it's like two sentences at the end that just have to be clean up. That's it. It's not it's not a material change. Okay. All right. And then if I could just okay. add what, what, or just if I could add one quick thing, uh, the other change we have to do is just every time we turn this thing into a PDF, sometimes like we have like see the early college pages and I, I don't think they match right now. They don't. So, yeah. right. so those are the, I went looking yeah. for them. That, yeah. that's the kind of cleanup we have to do. Um, yeah. All right. So at the end at the end, if this could if the final draft if if even if it's at the end of school could we have that final document that has all the corrections and everything? Oh, yeah. You sure. Yeah, we always, yeah. 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 And okay. you'd, you'd have access. My, my, my next question, um, senior English, is there only uh, Simon's Rock courses offered for senior English, or do we have a, if kids don't want to take the Simon's Rock initiative, is there English class for those kids so they don't have to take that? Right now we have uh, two offerings for the seniors. There's the AP class, and then there's writing in the humanities, and then the uh, college elective in the, in the spring. But they all have the ability to earn college credit? Yeah. High school credit? Yeah. AP, so this yeah. is what I think, I think what, what right. needs to be said here is the the difference between a wall-to-wall -wall college uh, uh, um, experience is not taking anything away, but adding an opportunity in a course. So it's still, you're, you'd be taking 12th grade English, whatever that looks like at whatever level, but you have the ability in that room to earn college credit, high school credit. You're not opting out, you're taking a class and then you're going to, whatever works when you're in that room is, is how it's going to be, you know, you either earn college credit, you earn high school, you don't earn both, whatever. There's yeah. that opportunity. It's not a takeaway or from. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess. Experience. The, the, yeah, the easiest way to describe it is that we're not, there's no opt out in the beginning. But as we move forward in the course, some kids will get high school credit, some kids will get high school and college credit. Right. So what's the difference if you pass the course? Don't you get both? If you pass the course, you get both high school and college credit. Yes. Yeah. So what happens if you don't pass the course? <laughs> if you don't pass the course, students don't get college credit, and you know we have them do some things in order to get high school credit. So we have, why can't we? Uh, I'm, why can't we just have a a, a, regular, a normal English class for kids that um, that don't want to do this? Because I think uh, every kid that we have has the ability to be successful in a college class, and I feel like if we offer both, um, we would have some kids who might choose to do that, thinking that you know, college isn't for me. Right, they make that decision and they don't really know. I would rather put them all in the college class and if things don't go so well, we make some changes on the fly so that they still can get their high school credit. But for some kids who told us in the beginning, you're killing me right now, like I can't be in this college class, they were actually really successful and got college credit. And some of those kids now say things like, I'm not sure what I wanna do, I thought I'd never go to college, but I think now I might want to try. Like for me, that's been the most important thing of this whole year so far, are some of the kids who are so set against it and then are now looking at this a little differently. I'm also, I'm all, I've been here a long time and worked with a lot of different kids. I also am concerned a little bit with sometimes uh, the family influence on kids um, where, you know, some kids think they can hack a college class but get talked out of it. And so prior to us having the agreement with Simon's Rock, we'd have our guidance counselor suggest the kids, hey, try a BCC class, it doesn't cost you any money, and then they get talked out of doing it because they didn't think they could. Um, and so I want to give every kid an opportunity and you know, find ways for them to be successful um, as we move 
And, you know, going through this wall-to-wall -wall college process, we're not looking at, you know, a half dozen classes that are going to be required. We're looking at certain classes as requirements to give kids the opportunity to try it. Because I feel that if kids who are dead set against college have some experience that's successful, they might look at it differently. Not that they need to go to a two-year college or a four-year college, but just the idea that, hey, if something comes up in my life, join the workforce, oh, wow, I can take this college class and be able to do this or advance in whatever they do, I think is a really important thing. Um, and I'm proud that we're offering it to our kids. I'd just like to add something, having read the entire submission for the grant. One of the greatest things that was said in your joint proposal was the idea of working with the community and working with parents. And the Simon's Rock has found, and this has been true with others, is that one of the biggest issues is if the family doesn't support the idea of a child going to college, very often they're doing it without the necessary information. And the fact that our grant allows us to work with families as well, I think is, is very important. It's very important for our communities, especially given you know, what we know is going on in our communities and the struggles that exist. So, I mean, when I saw all of those kids getting their sweatshirts, it was like, okay, we're, we're reaching people. And I, one of the other things, Art, is the fact that we're small means that these kids have the ability to go and say, Mr. Carpenter, I'm really struggling. What can I do? We have the support system I believe in place. And it's the first year. You know, we all, the struggle, the growing pains exist. All right. Um, I do, I yes, do, I please, really Beth. Have, I think it's super important to also think about it a little bit differently. Um, the, the pedagogy that's being taught on an early college level is about teaching skills and competencies. And it's taught differently so that kids, um, have a different experience about just sharing ideas and, and things that they might not have, think, ways of thinking that they didn't do. And you don't have to go to college afterwards to have that be a benefit to you. So mm -hmm. even that, you know, that's, that's the thing that's, I think, most exciting and most important. It's not about us trying to drive every single student into college. It's about giving them the right skills and competencies to be ready for whatever they are going to do in the future. And that is what this is about. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Just say it loud. Pardon? Just say it loud. Say it loud. Say it loud. So it gets say it loud. Okay. Say it loud. Right. All right. David, David still had something to say. I, I, oh, can you come back to me? I, or can I finish, please? Sure. Go ahead, Art. So I, I'm still concerned that if kids don't want to take this they don't have another option and as we get further into this going wall to wall i'm and this is me personally i'm worried that the high school known as mount everett loses its identity to becoming simon drop that's my concern thank you that's not happening right no it is. Mm. We're calling the high school Simon's Rock. No, we're not. No, we're it's not. not Mount Everett. Yes, it is. No. Come on. Look at your sweatshirt. Okay. <laughs> Look at your sweatshirt. Look at your sweatshirt. Thank you. Before okay. you, David has been waiting. David. Um, anyway, in terms of the, the program of studies, I, I definitely understand and sympathize with Art's concern about uh, a shoehorning children into all into college programs without any clear off-ramp. Like there are almost certainly, like giving them all the opportunities the universe is great happy talk, but not everyone is going to be up to that challenge. And nothing in the program of studies indicates any off-ramp. It's just 
based solely on you know the description we heard from uh, from Mr. Quinn, it's it's totally ad hoc. It's just when a kid has a problem and it's not working out, just throw it together at the last second. And I don't think that's a acceptable way to run a classroom. There needs to be a specific off ramp, a specific plan, and it needs to be baked into the program of studies. If they're going to do the same class, then the kids need to see what is expected of them from both tiers of performance. Okay. Um, let me. Kyle has his hand up as well. I just wanted to make a comment in that, um, you know, I'm not an educator, I'm not involved in curriculum, but I went to high school and then I went to college. And from your senior high school English class to your college English class, the skills are the same to pass both. You need the same skills. So I think this is a distinction that maybe we're making too much of. Go ahead. I Jim. can now? Okay. Um, I worked at the high school level for a significant part of my life. And I think one of the things that happens at high school is kids find out who they are. Okay. And I was moved by what Jesse said because I think that it was a different situation. It wasn't academics in my case, but being able for a kid to say, yeah, this is who I am, this is my path. Giving them that opportunity is, I think it's good for the kid even, even if they don't get to go to college, even if they don't have any interest in college. If they join the Marines, the day they get out of high school, that's fine, but they can say, this is who I am. That's the important part, I think. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, two things. I would like to have a list of what those classes are for the wall-to-wall -wall that are giving these 30 credits that they could possibly obtain. And secondly, when it's made. When it's, well, when it's made. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would like to move off the subject and go to another section of our program of studies, which I see there's a lot of maybe ads to the VOTEC part, or were these programs existing? Are you, are you talking about the technology section? Or the uh, no, vocational department. The vocational section, um, I don't think changed much. Um, You've we always had, had wood uh, carpentry and now yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, always. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. How, and how come it's never been like advertised? Because people keep saying that we have nothing here for trades. Um, I don't. I don't have a good answer for that. Like, I mean, those are because those are programs. That surprised yeah. me. I could have said I didn't. Even, I knew it used to exist. I mean, but our, I never knew it existed still because I never heard about it. The carpentry program has been in existence. I know. I, I my husband went the to it. Seventies, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, my husband took it. I know. Culinary since trees grew. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> we yeah. we transitioned from uh, home economics to culinary arts. No, in the I early know. early 2000s. No, I was <laughs> um, say. Yeah, I mean, it's been, those programs have been around a while. We get kids who, um, like building structures, are really for those hardcore kids who want to do like the two period experience of you know building the, the sheds we do or going in the community and doing some of the building. Um, and then the culinary arts one, two, and three are, are for those hardcore kids. I know kids. all about the culinary program, but I, I guess my point is is the, these other programs don't get a lot of airtime so to speak, in our vocational programs. And I just wonder, why aren't we telling people that we have these, you know? Because, like I said, I was floored when I'm looking through this section because I was like, well, we have these. Mm -hmm. You know, why aren't we telling people we actually have these? <gasps> we do, but probably <laughs> not loud enough. Not, not loud not enough. Because people in the community know and come to us for sheds, they come to us for other But that's what I'm saying, I think we need to be louder. Yes, all right, <laughs> add it to Nancy, yes, add it to, you, say. to your committee. Well, she, that's, that's what, what I was going to say. Point yeah, that's, in that. Right. That's what I'm saying is the community outreach. We need to like get it out there that, you know, because, you know, everybody thinks we don't have so nothing. Is that <laughs> we have nothing. Yeah, it's teaching us. We're just, yeah. you know, pushing kids to academics, but yeah. it seems we have uh, quite so, a bit. And then yes, who's we doing, do. Who's doing culinary? And our uh, Kanga is our culinary teacher. And she's awesome. 
Yeah, our culinary, as a matter of fact, at one of the meetings of that vote group related to the regional planning board, they were saying, well, we should do the Mount Everett culinary program. Well, like I said, I've heard all about, I, my kids took yeah. culinary and yeah. stuff like that, but when I saw the carpentry program, oh, yeah. I was floored because that is what I do. I did not know they had it here. Mm -hmm. We thought it went out like no, my husband. You know, like my he's old. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Did I say it on camera? You can, you can I mean, give, you took it a long time ago. Your company no, can give an internship like, or an apprenticeship. <laughs> and it's funny. We actually sent out letters to Monument years ago and touched base with their guidance counselor and asked for an internship, and we got no response. <sighs> So that is interesting. Oh my God, and we had kids who were dying for because it. Because we have always looked well, for Well, now them. we know. Well, you've spoken Now to I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. And they, they're good. So. Okay. Um, all right. With that, let's uh, take a vote. Okay. Um, I will start it. Wait, David. I'll make a motion. No, there's a motion on the floor. Um, I, I actually there is, that we, we tabled this. There so is a the motion, David. Asking all directions and things. David. I, I think it's probably best for us to be voting on I don't think the complete version me. rather than a mostly complete interim version. David. Uh, so I'd like to move to table that for when it's ready. Can he? Can you hear us? There is a motion what? currently on the floor. A motion. Your motion is out of order. I see. Okay. I don't think you're. So, how do I make that? He said, I say. We have a motion that we're voting on at this point. Right. If that motion passes, there'll be no need for your motion. All right? Right. Okay. Carl. No. Yes. Kim. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, Bonnie, Art. Bonnie. No. David. Hmm? David. <laughs> a vote. No. Okay, and I'm a yes. So that's eight yeses, two noes. The program of studies is passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all the work, and I look forward for us getting all the revisions yeah. to there, won't, there won't be many, but there's a couple, yeah. but I appreciate it. Appreciate the dialogue. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. Um, unfinished business. Okay. Uh, let's go uh, from there. Uh, we have a subcommittee. We have any unfinished that you can think of? No. We had things that'll unfinished that'll come up in the committee reports. Um, Sarah, finance subcommittee. No updates. Okay. Um, Nancy, community relations, public school advocacy. We're in the process of putting together the spring budget newsletter, and uh, yep, yeah, it's on its way. And we just met this afternoon. Okay. Policy. So yes, we met. <laughs> Dennis. Policy, uh, we are still short one person. Yeah. I, I sent another email around to uh, uh, two of you, one <laughs> down on the end there, <laughs> about the fact that, that uh, uh, I had sent a note around earlier saying, you know, we're short one person. And, you know, our timing now is that... Okay, they, let's they, get they, someone right now. Well, no, no, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Let me just finish. Okay. The, the re reason why it's kind of important right now is that uh, uh, MASC has just gone through a like a almost a, 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 an oversized wave of released information mm -hmm. that they've, they've, they've gone through a complete redo of all, all the MASC policy section. <laughs> Okay, and and uh, so we're 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 going to be doing policy meetings like okay. about every other week for 
Th yeah, that's not going to encourage people. To <laughs> I'm not going to get to well, no. How many? Who do you have now? I have to go look it up. Well, the, the the one that we don't have anymore is our former chair. Our former chair was a member of the policy committee. So we're down to four people. Four yeah. is sufficient. Four is, four is perfect. Well, we, we, we've always had five. Well, you could call a meeting with four. <laughs> yeah, we can. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm on way too many committees, yeah, and I can't remember them all. If you're stuck, Dennis, you can, uh, I'll, I really can, but I'll do it. <laughs> all right, policy, but definitely let's go. Personnel and negotiations, we don't have anything right now. Art, buildings and grounds. We need to have a meeting also, like you said. Okay. So You'll when, that's when are you back? Um, 1.30 in the morning on the 16th, so <laughs> let's not pick that time. Um, <laughs> how about 2.30? How about <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just in case, very thoughtful. Very thoughtful of you. So <laughs> nice of you. <laughs> All right, so you'll set a meeting the, the week following after. week after. Okay. Super All right. Give me some time, please. Okay. That's All right, you'll give him some time. Well, okay. Yeah. Jim, your turn. I brought my notes this week. I'm sorry that I forgot them last week. Okay. Uh, we had a meeting nine days ago, eight days ago. Um, and really a couple of things. Uh, one, um, the, the alignment of uh, Beth's goals with the, the uh, educational goals of the, of the, of the schools is, is impressive and we're aligned for continuous improvement. That was what she is working on and we're all working on, I think. Um, you have the two motions? And the two, what are the two motions? Oh, to accept, the, the, I have to move you, that we accept the two, there were two motions that were made and passed. That's what I've been saying to you. <laughs> That's what we have to do. Okay. They are recommended, we recommended them for the full school committee. Okay, I'm just, uh, I'm blanking on it. So we have to recommend to accept that's? No. No. The two. These are your goals. Our goals. Our goals. Mm -hmm. Sarah, do you have your minutes? We talked about... Um, Why don't... I mean, this is ridiculous. This is going to be April before we pass it. Yeah. Do you actually have the minutes? I have my notes right here. Okay. No, Do you have the two them. motions? Yeah. The, like the two goals, right? Two goals. What you mean? Okay. Uh, goal number one was to, um, to work on existing strategies for continuing improvements, I think, with the school committee. No. No. <laughs> Working on relationships. I have, I have, I have that's the other twice. goal. That's the I have an idea. Within the school committee, yeah. um, talking about getting the Dorothy Dresser and mm -hmm. um, doing like a, we talked about a summer retreat, getting to know mm -hmm. kind of one another and learning how to like work together with one another. Mm -hmm. um, that was one goal. And do we have do, do we have to stop there, or do you want me to keep going? And it, well, do you have it? Can you formulate it in a motion? so that we don't. Uh, All right, do you, I'll go through the rest of the committees and come back. Okay. Okay, <laughs> see if you can. Um, executive minutes review, Carl? Well, within the week, I'm going to schedule a meeting, which will certainly be before our next school committee meeting to go over uh, okay. uh, minutes of uh, executive sessions so that um, so that they can either be ruled uh, 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 premature for the release or appropriate for release. And there are, there, there are quite a few minutes that have still not been released. And, and mm -hmm. I believe, just on my cursory review, that, uh, um, uh, that some of those should be available for the public to see. But there's no reason that they should remain executive uh, minutes not subject to uh, production but uh, within the week I'll, I'll schedule a meeting Thank to you. review those all right um curriculum julie we need to set one of those up yeah so and it's just you and me i think i'll send you guys an email okay all right 
I can't go. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, we let early childhood. We don't have anything. Um, so they haven't been met, and um, the ad hoc regional agreement review subcommittee. It's ad hocs. We haven't met. Um, okay. Do you have it for us, Sarah? Um, well, could you just help me with a motion? I'm not really sure yeah. how to do that. <laughs> start. So I just say start a motion. Okay. I make okay. a motion. I, I make a motion. motion. Thank you. Um, to approve goal number one for school committee, working on relationships with one another um, and setting up a possible summer retreat with Dorsey Dresser. Um, Second. Okay. So it's working on relationships um, between and among school committee members. All right. <laughs> and setting up, well, it would be both the meeting that was are the and possible. Mm -hmm. um, Retreat. All right, so this is the way I have it. Um, you're saying I moved um, that the first goal of the school committee is working on relationships between and among school committee members to achieve improved performance and setting up a meeting with Dorothy Presser or other MASC leader and a possible re uh, retreat. Do I have it? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that, is there a second to the motion now that I made it? Yes. Okay, Jim seconded. Any discussion? Good. Can we vote for That's, half of it? What? <laughs> Can we vote for half of it? <laughs> Hold on, hands are up, hands are up. Yeah. David? This communication goal and retreat, like what what exactly is the the end point? What is the purpose that we're trying to achieve here with all of this? We're trying to approve uh, improve communication and have a um, a better coordinated school committee and a school committee where members understand their roles and responsibilities. And, and um, uh, what would this retreat that was suggested, if we're all there, would that be, a, would we have a quorum and have a school committee meeting? Would that be a public event? No, what you do is you declare a working meeting and a working meeting um, such as a retreat, a gathering like that is not considered a public event. We've done it before. It's done all the time. All right. Obviously, planning and sketching would be appropriate if I'm going to have any chance of being able to do that. Um, but, okay. Okay, any further? Carl. I'm, I'm not sure why, why this is a, a, an appropriate topic for a motion. Because we, we, our job that the full school committee gave to this subcommittee is to establish the goals of the school committee. So the, this subcommittee has come back with two motions and the school committee has to agree as a whole that they agree with this goal and then the next outgo next goal deals with outreach into the community. What's the what's the title of the subcommittee? It is superintendent the evaluation superintendent evaluation, evaluation subcommittee. Because it was determined two or three meetings ago 
that our goals would have to be in line with the superintendent's goals, the full school committee voted to send the goal setting to this subcommittee so that this subcommittee would bring it back to the full school committee to determine if the, these goals are what the school committee wants. Well, I, 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 my view is I can't, I can't support that. I don't think it's an appropriate topic for a, for a, a superintendent evaluation uh, subcommittee. It may be for some other subcommittee, but I don't think it is, and well, I oppose it. The full That's school all. committee had voted to send it there. So you can vote no. Yeah, well, I will. Okay, yeah, you have that option. Okay, any other further comment? All right, so let's take a vote on goal one. Kyle. Yes. Jim. Yes. Dennis. No. Okay. Sarah. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Kim. No. Dennis. Uh, Dennis. Carl. No. Okay. Um, Art. No. All right. And David. No. Okay. And Bonnie is a yes, which means it's tied. Okay. Which means that didn't pass. Goal two. Do you have that as a motion? Uh, I call the motion uh, goal number two, which is um, in supporting the superintendent and community outreach, um, and letting the community get to know the school committee members. We should, you know. I can't hear you guys at all. Okay. Be more like in the public eye, uh, attend assemblies. Um, just getting more engaged within the community. So to set up a regular system for us, for board members to join school district events. Okay. That's what I do. Right. Perfect. Good. Can someone read back? Can you hear them? Doesn't yeah. sound like nope. a motion to I me. Know. You guys hear us? I, I can't yes. hear neither. It seems like it's after the vote by you guys that the, the, the uh, sound always has a problem. That's great. We said no, and all of a sudden sound drops out. That's that's reassuring, right? And I don't know how many other people voted no too, so I don't know if it passed or not. It didn't. I don't pass. think it did. But it I was a tied it. vote. Yeah. Uh -huh, because we didn't hear that. Okay. So, so um, they hear else? The goal. It second. sounds like we're in an out room. It almost feels like you it can't doesn't. Can't have public. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, they all. Maybe we should stop talking. Okay. They fix the audio. Let's just, we're a minute from ending this. This is why, excuse me, subcommittees have to have um, any recommendations to the full school committee done in an appropriate motion format. Um, it is not good to be doing this on the fly. Um, my suggestion is that you meet again and come up with a an exact motion for the full school committee because this is yeah just do that okay all right uh future what to make sure that they could hear that to make sure that no. they could yeah the, the rec did you hear my recommendation what we're going to do it's going to no go back what I, I heard you say that they need the sub needs to give us some more specific recommendation but there's a whole bunch of stuff in between that I, I didn't right. hear at all all right basically it is that it's going back to the subcommittee to establish the other motion pass or fail we can't hear it the other motion had a tied vote, so it did not pass. And this motion on the second point 
is presumably, based on what you just said, withdrawn, correct? Correct. It's going back to the subcommittee, which is where the full school committee sent it originally. Future agenda items. Um, annual audit report, Beth? It's, uh, it's on there for when it gets completed. But okay. And the guidance and college report you have listed already and collaboration with other districts. Yeah. Any efforts? I think we've got to get our stuff together before we run and collaborate um, is my comment for right now. But let's keep it, let's keep it on the agenda. If anybody has any other um, future agenda items, oh. please communicate. I apologize, but we have a very short video of our student spotlight that I skipped over. Oh, I'm very sorry I'm about that. Sorry. Well, maybe well, it's, it's a positive way. To it is. It. I think it would be wonderful. And okay. Right. Is uh, Charles introducing this at all? Or? Yeah. All right, so this is my proposal for a toddler early college can you, can you, model wall program. Can you come to the microphone? You've got, you got to get us some yeah. yeah. I need you at the microphone. So AP classes are going to be bathroom etiquette and bedroom <laughs> behavior. Mm -hmm. No, okay, so really quickly for the last, well, we're in the middle of it. So for the last four Just weeks. Just let me know one thing. Yes. Your wife hasn't given birth yet? No, she has not. She's at the frog. I will be there imminently. Okay, so <laughs> this is um, the last four weeks, every year, the fifth grade has partnered with the Housatonic Valley Association um, and the Mass Audubon to bring some of the environmental science that we learn about in fifth grade to life. Um, and the way they do this is um, they go through the water life cycle and they learn about how water takes many shapes and forms and the different parts of the environment it encompasses um, during this cycle. I'm sure a student could explain it better than me. Um, however, one of the fun things that Miss Mallory and Miss Whiteside have done this year is they have a challenge and students are wearing these bracelets um, which represent the different life cycle. We know multiple intelligences, kids learn and remember things differently. So then Mr. Sullivan and I, when we find one of these students transitioning from class, going to recess and so on, we can stop them and ask them right away to tell, tell us about their individual life cycle that they've created. Um, after the eight weeks of this learning, it'll culminate in two things, a project where they develop their own light, um, their own water filters, and a canoe trip. Um, so without further ado, I have two students, I believe Edwin, yeah. Edwin, do you have your water cycle bracelet? Mm -hmm. Please tell me the story of your water cycle. I was doing animal spots, spit me out onto a plant. I fell off the plant and infiltrated into the soil. I evaporated up into a cloud. I stayed in the cloud for a bit and then I precipitated down onto a plant, fell off and infiltrated into the soil. And I got licked out by an animal, and the animal spit me onto a lake. I evaporated up into yeah. the sky again, and then precipitated down into the ocean. Excellent. <laughs> then also we have, I believe, Nevea Barna. And the students did not know it was yeah. going to be. Yeah, I started a cloud, and I went to rivers. It's yeah. it's All right. Uh, seeing no objections, we're adjourned. Have a good evening.